Shalom. You know, this is uh, GMS Chicago coming coming at you again with another lesson. And uh, first and foremost, we want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles, the elders of uh, all Israel in New York that rule well. And salutations to Yaakim that are, that are pushing this truth in the four corners of the earth. And uh, basically today uh, we want to uh, want to get into basically how this truth isn't uh, really, a, you know, it ain't a, a walk in the park. You know, you got, you got to know what you're getting yourself into, right. you know. And uh, I want to start with the scripture of Matthew, mm -hmm. I mean Luke. This is uh, Luke 14, and uh, I'm going to start at verse 6, 16, so lock here. It says, Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to come to them that were bidden. Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And, and if you can, brother, in Sirach, where it says, uh, A wicked man maketh an excuse. Oh, yeah. oh. Uh, verse 19. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lands of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. So, you know, so basically, this goes into uh, uh, these uh, people, uh, the, well, these uh, the ones who come in the truth, and then you know when when shit starts getting real, when they, when they start getting tested, they start making excuses. You know, they, they start uh, whatever it is that they can find, they just use it to not to not do the work. And at first, you know, you know, you, you don't really notice it, but after, after you see them continue do, uh, to do it. It's like not nah, you know this guy's playing. This guy is getting scared, or he's he's not uh you know up to what he supposedly said he would he was uh, when he barely started. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. okay. Um, this is uh Sirach, chapter thirty-two, verse seventeen. It says a sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. Is that one you wanted? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna read it again. This is Sirach 32 and 17. A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. Right. So, this is just like these guys, man. They were sinful men, you know. They were being reproved because, look, man, hey, this work is the main priority. Let's go out here and push this word, man. You know, let's go out here and, 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 and bid these people to the marriage, you know. But they were bid and they started making excuse, you know. God. Uh, how Shai said, uh, "Them who, who don't forsake uh, mother, father, you know, daughter, you mm -hmm. know, they cannot be my disciple." Lands, wives, you know. This guy right here said he married a wife. You know, you you got that up? You looking for? Yeah, it's ten. I got it. Okay, this is Matthew's uh, ten. And, uh, let me see if I can. See. Oh yeah, I'll start right here. This is Matthew 10 and 36. It says, it says a, man, a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Uh, it says, verse uh, Matthew 10 and uh, 37. I'm going to start from there. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Right. So taking your cross is the tribulation. Mm -hmm. uh, all that all that shit. Uh, like, for example, when you, when you come into the truth, you're going to go you're gonna go more, more into... You're going to deal with more bullshit than when you were in the world. Why? Because now you're trying to live righteously. You know, and and trying to live righteously in a, in a place that that that's uh, <coughs> that's the 
total opposite of that is, is going to be hard. You're going to be afflicted more. So if you if you can't bear that or whatever comes your way, you know, what is it? It says, um, he that, my best says, and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Right. You, you're, not, you're not worthy of Yahushua. You're not worthy to be his, his disciple. Uh, in verse 39, he that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that lo loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Right, because you got nigg niggas out there like, hey, uh, man, I, I, I gotta find myself. I gotta, you know, I gotta, I gotta do this. I gotta, you know, I'll be back. I'll be back, though, man. I just gotta, you know. And they might wanna pursue a career or something like that, you know, go to school, finish that up, whatever. Um, there's so many various excuse, you know, excuses, man. And then that's what, uh, um, that's what um, uh, makes people fall out, man. Is the cares of the uh, of this world, man. You know, like, you know a lot, of, a lot of um, the majority of the time it is usually because of family, man. Whether it be um, or a woman, yeah, kind of which I was gonna say, that's, you know, your family, you know. Whether it be uh, um, your parents or your um, your wife or your kids, a lot of people fall out because of, because of that, man. All right, and and you gotta forsake it all, like. Hey, it is what it is, you know. And like how it said right here is, um, he that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. And it's not talking about like literally losing your life, but you're gonna be dead to this world when when you're uh, engulfed in this truth. Okay, yeah, well, Paul said I die daily, mm -hmm. and um, and basically uh, forsaking everything and coming into this. Live because th these words are life. They 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 uh like uh like the what was it in Ezekiel? I see I seen flesh come upon his bones. Oh, yeah. So 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 they, once you start uh, f when you forsake everything that you used to do or, or how the way you used to live, the way you used to think, you you start be, uh, becoming more light. You know. Because what it is to a lot of these niggas, and I'm gonna call it what it is. A lot of these niggas, this truth is a burden unto them, right? Uh, I'm going to start with Sirach 6 and 19. It says, Come unto her as one that ploweth and soweth, and wait for her good fruits. For thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her. So I can. It says, For thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her, but thou shalt eat of her fruits right soon. So when you come into this thing, you've got to apply yourself. You've got to work. You know? Verse 20. It says, She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. She will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial, and he will cast her from him ere it be long. So niggas come into this truth and think it's all it's all cool, it's all about brotherhood, it's all about getting together and kicking it and drinking and eating chicken. No, nigga, it ain't about that, man. Uh, hey, it's about it's like you go ahead, brother. Yeah, it's like the one brother uh, from Dallas, I think it's um Ariella. He, he always says it, man. There's a lot of chicken eating niggas, God, even God. within GMS, man. Yep. And but we're at the time where, because the Lord's coming back very soon, that they're getting weeded out, man. You know, right. and, and especially since the um, what I've noticed, this is just my personal observation. Ever since um, the order came out to make two videos a week, a lot of people it shows who's really in this and who's not. God, yeah. You know? yeah. That's just something I personally. Have observe because these guys look at it as a burden man it's just it's just a fad it's just something to do so now when you require to make two sit downs or you got to be out there every week or you got because us in chicago we have three classes a week now the brothers is only it's only mandatory that brothers make one class you know and you got brothers not even making one class man brothers not showing up on the line you know so so, so if, if if this thing is burdening you if you feel like man Man, I gotta go to the line today, man. Or I gotta go to Clay. This ain't for you, then, nigga. Beat it. You ain't gotta stay here, man. Cause I look forward. We look forward That's right. every week to going out there. Even the class, man. Even to just be around the brothers. Even to do this. This is a blessing, man. And if you don't see it that way, then fuck you, nigga. And and go do your own thing, nigga. Go die in the famine, race wars, die by the missiles, nigga. Whatever. I don't care. As Second Ezra said, man. We worry about the salvation of the uh, of the righteous. Fuck you, niggas, man. That's right. 
So if you wanna be in, in, in that circle with them niggas, man, hey, if you if you ain't, hey, like Yahweh Shah said, man, I'm about my father's business, man. If you ain't about our father's business, nigga, fuck out the circle, man. That's right. Uh, like how you were saying, like this ain't like a burden, cause hey, man, <coughs> for me right now it's pretty late, man. It's like almost midnight out here, and we're making the sit down. I gotta still drop off these brothers, get to the house, and wake up for work tomorrow. I think this you have work tomorrow early too, right? Yeah, that's tomorrow. Come, but but you know we, a lot of brothers sacrifice, man, throughout all the. Uh, uh, um, uh, of camps, man. And look at the apostles, man. They'll do a sit down at the at the studio, then go to the line, line then, then maybe yeah, show. they might relax, eat some food, you know, replenish, then do a live show for another two hours. Yep. Come on, man. I right, agree, so. no, no way, bro. This is uh, Revelations ten and ten. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. So, you know, uh, that's these niggas. You know, at first they're all, they're all wooed and shit. You know, uh, uh, for example, like the sweet will be uh, when we hang out, you know, when, when we, you know, go out and eat and all that. But once once you start seeing the, the bitter, which is the afflictions, you know, and, and uh, the way you're supposed to to live according to the scriptures you know like the brother said it becomes a burden to them so they, they start like hating it they start like doing less and they, slowly they start departing because they can't handle that bitterness yeah. I, I agree so play. this is Proverbs 27 and 7 because it just said uh, it was in my mouth sweet as honey right mm -hmm. so I get Proverbs 27 and 7 it says the full soul loatheth and honeycomb so if you so in, in your mind, if you think you got it, you gonna despise this knowledge, right? But to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. So once 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 you get the understanding of these scriptures, even the bitterness of these scriptures is sweet to us, man. Because we gotta go through these afflictions, and like like the scripture says in Hebrews, man, the captain of our salvation was made perfect through suffering. So if Yahweh Shah was made perfect through suffering, and he said that the uh, the servant is not greater than the master, so likewise us. So we should we should desire to go through these afflictions so we can be made perfect like our Father in Heaven is, is, is perfect, man. We should desire that, man. The Lord said he deals with, uh, with, with you as with sons, man. So if you're getting that whip on your back, you're supposed to, man. Glory to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, man. I got some over here. <laughs> this is Acts 4. Um, I'm going to start at, uh, I think, I'm going to start at, okay, this is Acts, Salaki, this is Acts 5 and 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them, actually I'm going to start, um, I'll just, yeah, I'll keep reading. Salaki, okay, Acts 5 and 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this word be of men, it will come to naught. Um, but it, if it be of the Most High, ye cannot overthrow it. Least happily ye be found even to fight against the Most High. Verse 40, and to, him, and to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Yahweh Shai and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Because you were talking about pretty much um, how uh, we should be rejoicing when we go through trials and tribulations. The uh, the apostles, uh, I forgot, who, I think this was Peter and yeah, Paul. Uh, Peter and John. So yeah. like, uh, Peter and, um, it's Peter and uh, I forgot the other. The it's Peter and John. Kind of, it's the brother said Peter and John. They um they they uh, were rebuking uh, these Pharisees and they basically got, uh, um, you know, beat and uh, thrown into prison because of that. And um, and um, they, they they counted joy that that happened to them, because the, the, I'm gonna read that part again. Verse uh, this is Acts five and forty one, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer to, to suffer shame for his name. You know, sure. and that's yeah. yeah. Um, and and this, this kind of 
it's kind of weak because man, what we're going through ain't, ain't nothing compared to, to what's to come. Jacob's trouble is going to be much worse than than this, what we're going through now. That's right. So n niggas are falling off right now over this little shit. How much more when uh, Jacob uh, trouble come? That's right. Uh, hey, they're, uh, cause really, we're not even going through too much. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, we got to work. We might have to deal with, um, either you got to deal with the woman or, you, you know, some brothers, they don't have a woman, so that's an affliction. Like, what, what else? You know what I'm saying? Like, like you, you got to deal with, um, you know, infirmities or, or dealing with, you know, uh, your household being against you. It's really, it, it ain't too bad, man. You know what I'm saying? Because the Lord still, you know, uh, gives you food, clothing, and raiment, you know? And shelter and all that. Uh, Do you, uh, you can... Yeah, yeah, because uh, this is uh, Matthew 19, and I'm going to start at 27. It says, Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Yahweh I said unto him, Unto him, so I can. Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Verse 29 is the point. It says, And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, right? So then they start to make excuse. One guy said uh, uh, he bought a, a part of a part of ground. Okay. The, the Lord just said if you've forsaken the land. Another uh, nigga said he bought five yoke of oxen. He must go. He's still talking about working his land. And then another nigga said that uh, uh, he just married a wife. The Lord just said you forsake brethren. For the uh, slack, so I'm gonna start over. It's verse 29, Matthew 19, 29. And everyone that have forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters. Or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Ultimately, man, these niggas don't believe, man. That's ultimately what it is. It goes down to these niggas have no faith, man. You know? That's right, because what, what, what is it, man, in, in the world that they, they ain't really nothing to, uh, what do you say that? Oh, at least, at least to to me or to us, that that's something that's there that that would be worth to to lose this, you know? Like I got a perfect scripture for you, brother. I know what you're trying to say, but the script the scriptures will speak better. This is Romans eight and thirty five. It says, "Who shall separate us from the love of Yahweh? Shall shall tribulation or distress?" or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sore. It says, as, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. It says, nay, and all of these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of the Heavenly Father, which is in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah, our Lord. God, see, there's, man, because you're still, you're still going to be a fucking slave. Huh? You're still going to go, if anything, you're going to go... More through more bullshit, the simple fact that you found out this truth. You know what are you, what are you gonna do? Just ride around, ride around, fucking uh, ride around with your niggas down Lakeshore Drive, smoking a blunt. That, that, that's what you, that's what you call better than you know this word. It's like uh, for example, uh, what uh, that quote from The Matrix where he says, uh, you know, because basically we don't know if we're gonna be safe, but but the, the simple fact. That there's, there's a chance that we might, that that's uh, worth uh, dying for, mm -hmm. you know, this thing. Uh, just the hope, you know, the, the hope, you know. Right, the, just the hope because uh, it's, I, basically you, I, I'd rather die knowing there's a chance than, than, than to fucking 
Not try at all. You're not trying at all. So, this is Matthew's, 5, Matthew's 12 and uh, 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return to, unto, so like, I will return into my house from whence I came out. Mm -hmm. And when he is gone, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. All right, so, so when you come into this truth, this word cleanses you. All those demons that was on you leaves you. You know? So it says when he comes back and he finds the house empty, clean, and garnished, it's talking about you, your body. Mm -hmm. So that demon comes back and sees, sees your body, your house, is clean. You know? You, you was clean through the washing of the word. But go ahead. It says in verse 45, Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits. So when you go back into the world, you allow that demon to come back in you. So once that demon comes in you, guess what? He calls seven of his guys. Like, hey, I got my crib back. You know what I'm saying? It's clean and shit. Let's tear this motherfucker back up. You know? So he come back with his guys, and now you, the scripture is going to go ahead. Yeah, it says seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Mm -hmm. So like how this brother was talking about, you, you, you used to smoke, you know, blunts on Lakeshore Drive with your, you know, with your guys, so to speak. And next thing you Next thing you know, you're smoking fucking crack, man. You know what I'm saying? You might turn into a faggot, man. God. You know what that, I'm saying? That's how that's crazy. scary as shit. That's what crazy these demons out there. You might be like, nah, that ain't gonna be me. But coming into this truth and, and forsaking it, we, hey, that's, like the scripture said, said seven, more, seven more demons are gonna come in. It says seven other spirits more wicked. It's more that, wicked. Not just seven, just seven more wicked spirits. Uh, and then number seven means completion. So it could be seven, uh, it could be uh, uh, seven demons, it could be ten demons, it could be fourteen demons. Hell, it could be legion. Okay. And it says, uh, and they entered in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. And that's the point. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the point. Now back in Luke 14... Um, I'm sorry, 22. It says, And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. And that's what we're doing, man. Each week, we go out there to the highways and hedges, to the, uh, the uh, what they call it, the streets and the lanes, you know what I'm saying? Man, the highways and byways, mm -hmm. you know? And, and compel the people to come in, man. Verse, uh, verse 24 For I say unto you That none of those men which were bidden Shall taste of my supper As the scripture says Many are called but few are chosen Verse 25 It says and there went great multitudes with him And he turned and said unto them If any man come to me And hate not his father And mother and wife And children and brethren And sisters Yea and his own life also he cannot be my disciple. That's right. And that's the point, man. You got to hate your life, man. We, you, This is not living, man. This ain't fucking living, man. First off, you, you, you breathing fucking poison. You drinking poison. You eating poison. Knowing that you're supposed to be the ruler of this world, but yet you're on the bottom of this goddamn place, man. All these heathens who are beneath you look down on you, man. Hey, your woman, you're her God, but she's above you. This whole fucking place is backwards, man. You always bring this out, brother. Hey, man, being in, the, in this flesh, man. And just alone being in, in this flesh, flesh like, that, that shit, that's vexating. Because like how Paul said, it says, and I forgot, I think it's in Romans, that I do the things I don't want to do, but the mm -hmm. things I, I want to do, I, I do not. You know? Just being in this goddamn flesh, man. Just knowing that, that you can go off at any moment. Mm -hmm. That's... That, that, Go ahead. Oh, I'm reading. So watch it. <laughs> it says, um, verse 27. And whosoever doeth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And bearing your cross is carrying that burden, man. Y'all shall bear his cross. What was his cross? He had to suffer. First for his sins, then for the sins of Israel, man. So now we bearing our cross, man. We present our bodies as a living sacrifice. 
Ecclesiastes 12, where it says the whole duty of man is to keep the law, man. So that's what we're supposed to do. We go out here and, 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 and tell our people their, uh, their, their sins, man. We awake our people who don't know who they are. Go out here and wake the one-third, man. As Paul said, he said, um, I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may obtain the same salvation, man. You know? Uh, verse 28. It says, For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? You know? Whether, whether, whether uh, uh, you have... This is, for example, all these... Can you pan the camera? Look at all these buildings. Man. All these buildings out here, you know, these motherfuckers took the time to build it and they had enough material to build these buildings. Now, there's some buildings out there who, who who's not even finished, man. Because they didn't have either enough money to, uh, for the material to, to finish building it, you know, or enough materials or whatever the reason. So when you come into this thing, you count the cost, man. You sit there like, man, okay, the scripture says this, the scripture says that, I'm going to suffer this, I'm going to suffer that. Well, shit. The end goal is better than what I'm going to suffer. Fuck it, it's worth it. Right, because you're going to suffer anyways. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You, whether you, you do it or not, you're going to suffer regardless. Yep. Verse 29 says, Less happily, after he had laid the foundation... And is not able to finish it. All that behold it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. So that's all you niggas that fell out, man. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah, you niggas wasn't man enough, man. That's simply what it is. You niggas is bitches, man. You niggas got female spirits, man. You niggas is effeminate. The word effeminate means uh, without faith, man. That's what it is, man. You niggas is bitches, man. God, and another thing, too, man. The men of the Lord are gonna mock you, but all those people that you knew back in the, um, the, that you knew in the world, they're gonna see you coming back and they're gonna mock your ass, man. Cause they're gonna be like, oh, weren't you all in that Bible? Weren't you holier than thou? You know, a couple months ago. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they, they so fucking wicked. They gonna welcome you back. Come. They gonna welcome all oh, you back smoking. We got ten blunts ready for your ass. You know what I'm saying? Wicked ass niggas, man. Come. Verse thirty-one. It says, for what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. Because he, he got 10, he got 10 more thousand men to him. You know? So he gonna fucking slaughter his ass, man. It says, so likewise, whosoever he be of you, that forsaketh not all that he hath, 